Windows Post Modules, this time on Metasploit Minute. This Metasploit Minute is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hakshop.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. This time we're going to show some of the Windows Post Modules that I personally use quite a bit. Um, there's, a, there's 120 some odd, and I'm sure by the time this airs, there's going to be a lot more. Um, but we're going to start off with just the list that I kind of use the most. So first off, and as you can see on the screen, I've got the list already pre-populated, so if you want to uh, kind of work ahead, you can, is this ARP scanner. This ARP scanner is basically um, uses something called Railgun, and we've talked about Railgun a little bit. It's a Windows API calls that Meterpreter can use. Um, it uses um, Railgun to create ARP packets across the network. That way you can find out what hosts are in your local broadcast or ARP uh, broadcast range um, without having to scan them. So it, it enumerates all of the hosts that are there without having to do a scan or a ping or have any ports open, uh, honestly. So um, since we already have from our previous segment um, all of the hosts already scanned and ARP scanned, and we're not going to actually do that. We are going to do um, a cache dump though. So we take it and it's very easy to use a, um, a post module. You just say use and then we uh, paste in what we're going to do. We have a debug option, um, but normally it's just um, a session option. So we're going to set session and you can actually tab complete. Um, whenever there's more than one session, you can it'll give you options. But set the session, type run, and since um, our actual box that we're targeting is not on our domain, you're not going to get any um, cached domain credentials, obviously. So the next one we're going to do is check VM. And I'm going to just talk about some of these as we go along. We're going to check VM. And why this is important, why checking for virtual machines is important, is sometimes um, incident responders or, or whatever can get kind of uh, sneaky and put you in a, a honeypot or a virtual machine. Uh, or you can be on a, a virtual machine or a server that's a virtual machine and, uh, and sometimes you'd like to know that that's, that's there and then you can start targeting the actual host OS. So show options, again, session's the only option. So we're going to just up until we hit session one, run, and this is definitely a virtual machine because it's running on <laughs> my uh, Mac right here. So yes, it's a VMware vir virtual machine, great. The next is um, GPP. If you haven't heard of GPP, just Google for it. It's Group Policy Preferences. And the great thing about this is in Windows 2008, um, I'm not 100% sure if it, it goes back before that or, or ahead, um, but in Windows 2008, you had the option to set um, preferences for the uh, group policy that said this username and password is used for a few things. Um, one, to create a local admin. If you wanted to create one local admin across all of your domain attached domain or uh, machines, then all you'd have to do is, is set that username and password inside of the group policy and it would get pushed out to all of your boxes. And it is a great initial thought on ways to um, set a local admin. So if you use this, it'll actually pull that out. The reason it can pull that out is because group policy preferences are, are stored in an AES encrypted, I'm pretty sure it's AES, an AES encrypted um, format but the key for that is actually published on MSDN, which is awesome. So you just, inside of the uh, module, you can see the keys in there, and then you can run that. The next one is Tortoise SVN. Most of the uh, admins who use um, Windows for stuff um, either use Tortoise for SVN stuff or, or some kind of SIGWIN alternative. Um, and great thing about Tortoise is you can save all of that username and password stuff. And if you use it, um, you can pull out all of their credentials for any SVN um, connections that they have. So not only you get the host box, you get any server that they have access to for SVN. Usually those are code repositories of all kinds of fun stuff. The next one we're gonna actually use is this WinSCP. So if we use post WinSCP, we're just gonna paste it in there, show options. I've already set the session in this. So WinSCP is a Windows secure copy alternative, and if you store passwords, it actually stores it. Um, and in a reversible way, 
and there you go, you have the password right there. It, WinSCP does tell you that this is not a recommended option when you click save password. So it does give you the option to not to be stupid, but we know that um, sometimes people choose not to use the convenience over security. So cool, we have a password. Now, now even we haven't even gotten off this one box using this post module, and we already have the Tortoise SVN server uh, if we had run that module. We also have the uh, password for this SSH server that this person goes into. And we're also going to do some DNS cache dumping. So use post. Um, well, we're going to skip that. But DNS cache dumping is essentially um, dumping all of the DNS cache for that Windows machine. So if someone's gone to, you know, AndroidHacks.com, for instance, they're going to see AndroidHacks.com in the Windows DNS cache. And then um, the great thing about that and why I usually use it is not for the external websites, but for the internal ones. This way you can enumerate websites that users inside of a corporate network or inside of a network go to that are internal without you having to kind of do an nmap scan or do any form of advanced scanning. So we're really focusing on with all these post modules gathering as much information as possible about that local network without ever having to get off the box or send other packets out other than that ARP scan obviously and the GPP stuff. So continuing down the list, we have Enum applications. Enum applications are great because you can, um, it enumerates all of the applications that are installed on that Windows machine. Enum Chrome and Enum IE and Enum Firefox. Um, I just put Enum Chrome in there. These all get um, not only the cookies that are stored in, but for Firefox and Chrome and IE, they also take out all of the passwords that are stored um, on each one of those. So, Enum Chrome specifically, it looks at the SQLite database and pulls that out. So whatever user you're actually logged in as, um, it pulls the passwords, cookies, and all that stuff out. So you get a lot more information about it. Then Enum Term Server is a very important one that I, don't, I think many people underutilize. It tells you where your user or where that box that you're um, currently on has ever RDP'd into. So normally you can assume that RDP access usually means, and in some cases it's not, but usually means admin access to admin access to a server. So you can find out where your user, not only SSH2 using the WinSCP stuff, SVN stuff, you can find out where they're RDPing to, that way you can easily pivot into those other boxes. Enum unintend, um, this actually is an unintend.xml file that is stored on the Windows box when it's first deployed. Um, when a, a domain or, or group has created a, a deployment image, um, it uses something called unattend.xml to create that local settings, including sometimes the local admin password or other accounts that are added to that box. And it, and it includes it sometimes in unencrypted format. So you could get um, free passwords out of that. The next one, the next two are some of my favorites. Inject CA and remove CA. Inject CA actually injects a certificate authority, and if you know anything about SSL, that's a really fun um, thing to have, a certificate authority cert into that box. That means if you're on that box using injection of some sort or, or a hash or some sort, and you find out there is some kind of restriction so that only signed binaries are allowed to be executed or, or um, allowed to run, you can inject a CA, and then all you have to do is sign something with that CA and now you can run the binary, it's great. Remove CA. Also, this also helps with SSL um, decryption. So if you wanna inject a CA and then change their proxy configurations, a la Pineapple, then you very easily can be man in the middle with SSL and they won't know the difference. There won't be any pop-ups saying, this SSL cert doesn't work. Finally, we're gonna go into um, the WLAN profile. Another one I feel is quite underutilized, but we're going to show you how this works. So WLAN profile, it's already set up, takes and runs a command in Windows that gives you, if you are a system or an administrator, gives you all of the passwords for any WPA, PSK, or WEP um, networks that someone's logged into. So Windows 7 and above keeps those passwords in clear text if you ask it, if you ask for it. 
So the great thing about this is this is more of a side channel. So let's say that I get onto a box using a fish or some other uh, network connection um, and I want back onto the network but for some reason my, my session died or, or that user account or, or um, system got re-imaged because they found my stuff. Now I can go to their office or close to their office and log in if they're using WPA, PSK or whatever. So this is a persistence method that isn't persistent on any box as long as they don't change the password for their WPA. Right, so you always want to have this other method to get in. That is if you can go to location wherever it is. So the next um, is some Active Directory um, post modules that I enjoy. Um, Enum Computers tells you all the computers. Again, very few packets on the wire showing you all the computers that are in the Active Directory. Um, service principal names. This allows you to find like SQL servers or anything with SPNs that identify themselves like a deployment server. Um, and then user comments. So many times in so many assessments as when I was a consultant, you'd find accounts on networks that had comments that said, password is X. And then you'd have the password for that. Like student ones are the, the, the uh, most common. So you'd have student account one, student account three, student account four, and then it'd be student account one for password or whatever in, in the stuff. Or, or student one, two, three, four and it'd always be in the comments so it'd be easy to remember. So those are the three Active Directory ones that I use quite a bit. And then finally, passing shells. Um, this one is, again, we're going back to a few episodes ago where, where I talked about two is one, one is none. You will not be um, surprised that I still fall prey to this. Uh, whenever, I, whenever I got on a machine, I'm always amped to, to continue forward, um, but I have to take a breath, you know, step back and say, Two is one and one is none because when you have a session and it dies, if you don't have another backup session, you've just lost that entire connection on however it took you to get in. So, and a lot of times it's a lot of work to get back on a machine. So um, if you have a backup session, you can do that. And the way you can do that is using that specific post module. So show options. And there's a bunch of options in here and you can set the payload, you can set the options, what it does is creates a new, new process or injects into current processes, throws the payload in it, and gets you a shell back. So um, you can do this to yourself, to your handler that we've set up previously, or to someone else. So if I want to send Darren uh, a session from this box, all I'd have to do is payload inject to him. If I want to send Paul one, that way we all have you know, sessions and we can all do stuff on them. Um, and if mine dies, I can say, hey, Darren, could you send me a new session? And, and he can do that for me um, because mine died. Or we're going to have multiple sessions with mine. So that's um, the majority of the, of the Windows post modules that I really enjoy using and I use all the time. Tell me what you think. Hit me up at uh, msf at hak5.org and stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. Thanks again for supporting the show. And if you, have, if you want to support us even more, you can go to hakshop.com dot com enter the coupon code MUVIX and get a free Metasploit sticker. Until next time, I'm MUVIX and I'll be hacking to the cows come home.